Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Admo Markets. My name is Chris. Thanks for joining us. We're going to take a look at the Forex market and technicals, technical analysis, and the charts. But before we do that, in this strategy webinar, we have this disclaimer to show. All right, there it is. First of all, the webinar is intended for a global audience and therefore may not be suitable for everyone. To find out if it is okay for you and other conditions and de details, visit AdmiralMarketsGlobal.com, select your country of residence and contact an appropriate entity. Also, trading for exchange and financial markets in general are considered high risk and may not be suitable for everyone. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar is not advice and is for informational and educational purposes only. And by continuing watching this web webinar, you agree with this disclaimer and you are aware of the risks involved when trading. All right. Take a look at uh, MetaTrader 4 Supreme Edition. I know I say it uh, every time we have a webinar, but I truly mean it. 56 additional features. Those are really a lot of things. And uh, there are a lot of cool extras like matrix tables and sentiment traders and alarm managements and really a lot of good stuff. So take a look at that. Today, we're going to take a look at strategy. Still, I personally um, don't have any preference. So if you want to take a look at something specific, let me know. Before we take a look at the charts, as always, a quick look at the calendar. And uh, we have, uh, or had, Aussie, some growth rate here, numbers that looked at pretty negatively. And the Aussie, uh, the Australian dollar weakening, uh, as is the Australian economy, perhaps. But we have, uh, maybe from a global perspective, even more interesting news event here on the US dollar ADP, Friday NFP. Those are big things. Otherwise, in our, let's say, Euro morning session, we just have some lighter news. All right. Good morning, Josh. Good to see you. Yesterday, we were taking a look at this Euro dollar, and uh, while eventually it bounced at around 112.50, it went a bit deeper than that. And that's, as you can see, the risk of putting the stop loss maybe uh, at 112.30 could have been tagged out and see basically price rebound. Um, it, I think the low was about 112.32 or something like that, 30, maybe even 31, something like that. Anyhow, it doesn't matter. Something like that, 112.30-ish. And uh, then it did bounce. So it went a bit below that 112.50. But the, the short-term moving average eventually held and gave support. It took a long time because these are these are one-hour candles, so uh, it was about four or five hours sideways, uh, but then a few hours of upside. Now, it didn't really rally all too high. It went up to about 113.25, about 75 pips at the very max, and already fell down again. And uh, you can see basically that it kind of got squeezed, didn't it? it um, Price was below the short-term moving average, right? And used that short-term moving average, which is 21 EMA band as resistance. And uh, the second time it kind of broke above it, which is here. Let me make that orange, right? Because this was the first push. This is the second. The second time it did make a rally. That was something we just that I showed in the on Monday. Yesterday, that already had happened. And uh, we were about, about here when the live webinar was taking place, right? <clears throat> and we said, well, or I said, you know, for me, it's too, it has gone too far. It did push up some few pips, actually maybe about 20 still or something like that. But then it did retrace and bounce again. And as you can see, basically the 21 being support and giving... Um, price space to rally up to the long term and it didn't stop exactly at the long term but the fact that it was around that area it pushed through it a bit but it, that sometimes happens here too but the fact that it was close by typically on average means that you know it's not going to go much further than that before hooking back to the 21 and that is 
what it did. So maybe today's strategy topic should be moving averages um, because I'm already talking about it. So from that point of view, it's a classical kind of development that we're seeing here on the euro dollar. Um, you know, first the, the uptrend price retracing back from the short to the long, then bouncing at the long, then not able to get the good bounce. So price still breaks through basically, and you get the crossover of the moving averages and you get the downtrend and then you get the retracement back to the long term, right? And what is it now? What, how about now? <clears throat> well, now basically uh, the moving averages are totally on each other. They're flat and they are intertwined, intertwined, they're intermingled here. And price is uh, right in those moving averages. So we got three factors going on here. We got the moving averages on each other, we have the moving averages flat, and on top of that, price is in the moving averages. So from our hourly perspective, this, 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 this price action right now is absolutely not interesting, all right? From a moving average point of view, it is as boring as can be. So this is not the currency pair that is interesting for me to trade. If, if, uh, yeah, big indecision indeed, exactly, Kido. So if price starts to show momentum to the upside or downside, these moving averages will be, will be pulled apart. The 21 will be pulled away from the 144 and 169. And once we get that gap, that gap between the moving averages, all right, that's when it starts to become uh, interesting. And that's when you probably will have the expansion. And that expansion will most likely happen in two, two, two phases, right? You'll get the initial expansion. That will pull the moving averages away. But you'll still get a hook back. And when the gap is there between those moving averages, then the moving averages will probably act as support and we'll see one more rally. This first move typically, typically goes less far than the second. The second will go further. So obviously I'm more interested in trading the second. So there's a lot of things have to happen for the euro dollar before I'm interested. It could be from a smaller part time first perspective, maybe a part of that first move on the lower time frame. Now that could happen to both directions. It could happen to upside like I have here, but it could happen to downside too. Basically, if you look at trend lines, you have this trend line to work with as a breakout and this as roughly a support. That's a classical triangle and moving averages confirm that. Very simple when looking at the hourly. And uh, in general, as a general guideline, these moving averages are great for understanding if there's a correction, if there's momentum, or if there's a reversal taking place. If this is a classical example of a correction, as we said, when the moving averages are touching, basically, I consider that a correction. So this, even here, I would consider a corrective phase. Now, if there's a gap between them, there's probably momentum happening. Like here, this is this whole zone is a downtrend, that green box there. And uh, this, from here, when, when they started to lose contact, this is an uptrend, right? Price is above the 21, 21 is above the, the 144, and the gap between the 21 and 144 is increasing. Classical trend, power, as you can see. And the 21 is used as support. In fact, price is moving so fast that it hardly even touches the 21. But most of the time, it will kind of pull back to that 21 and use that support. That's trend. This is range. This is indecision. This is downtrend, right? So how about the phase in between? That is a reversal or retracement. We don't know which one. Um, basically, price, eventually when there's divergence, in this case, there's not clear divergence, but most of the cases there's divergence, which means that 
when there's divergence, price will go back to the long-term moving average, which is here. That's the target of when divergence is present. It will typically go in three waves, one that peaks below the 21, then pops above it, and then goes below it again. All right, one, two, and three, and one, two, three. One that goes below the 21, one goes above the 21, and one below the 21 again, back to the long term. Typical for a correction or perhaps a reversal. In this case, we don't know because when price reaches the 21 long term moving average, it could still be a bouncing spot for a trend continuation. So that's a big decision level when price gets back to the long term one. Okay. So as you can see, this was um, a retracement until price started to break below it here, and then it started to become actually a reversal in a way, okay? Uh, so when price reaches back to the long-term and then starts to break, go in the opposite direction, it's a reversal. If it starts to bounce, it's actually a trend continuation. So the 21, when price is really impulsive, the 21 will act as support. When there's divergence, eventually price will go back to the long-term average, right? Because a price can accelerate and keep going and pushing and has a lot of momentum sometimes in it. And we'll use the 21 to, to continue, but eventually it can't last, can't do that forever. Uh, you know, we can see here a big 800 pip move, 700 pip move, and it, you know, that kind of rate is impossible to sustain. So eventually we'll go back to not only the 21, but even the 144, which it did, and now it broke below it. So that's how you can mark and we recognize all three phases. Very simple and very neatly, I think, with these moving averages. That's why I'm such a big fan of them. That's why I typically, I mean, I average, uh, I don't know, 90% of the time I have them on my chart, unless I really want to see price action clearly, no distractions. But uh, So from a four hour point of view, what do we see here? Well. We don't see divergence, but still, price did go back to the long-term moving average. And uh, that sometimes happens when price is overall on a correction. When price is in a correction, a bigger correction on a bigger time frame, which it is on the daily chart, then it, you know, because look at the daily, you can see that price pushed through the long-term moving average. And we know that if it accelerates, if it's close to that long-term moving average, it can accelerate a bit above it, but not all too much. Right before it hooks back to the 21. Look at that. Even on the daily chart, same thing. Same thing like we saw yet, uh, yesterday on the hourly, but now on the daily chart. Same exact. It's almost identical. Pushes through the long term, but hooks back to the 21. Same thing happening on the daily chart. In fact, here too was trending down. First move to the 21, then to the long term, right, and. Um, using this correction for one more rally here. So the question is, will the 21, from a daily point of view, will the 21 break? Or will we use the 21 to move up? And if we do that, there's something interesting going on. Because if it does move up, then we're going to get the moving averages aligned. And, no, not aligned. We're going to get them, uh, you know, how do you, we're going to get them on top of each other. And that's going to be consolidation in the meantime. So it's going to be a very interesting spot for your dollar from a daily point of view. Is it going to be a consolidation? Are we going to get into the consolidation mode? Or will we make the breakout below the 21? And will we start accelerating away from those averages? So when it, when price, as you can see on the daily, is choppy like that, price will typically go back to the long term more often. Only when it really there's a strong momentum or trend will it stay above the 21 for extensive times before hooking back to the long term. So as you can see, here was the first gap, here was the second gap, right? What did I say? The second gap is typically stronger. Now, this is a good example. The first push created a gap here. The second push created this kind of gap, typical for, for, for market movement. And in both cases, it hooked back to the long term, just because the price is pretty choppy. So what did we have? Well, we had a one, two, right, with strong upside. And uh, then we had a correction to the 21, bounce off it, then back to the 144, long term. Classical one, two, three, only difference is that it didn't kind of pierce through the 21 the first time. All right, tip, I mean, I don't know, I think 
I don't know percentage. I mean, maybe two out of three times it would maybe kind of pierce through it, but it's not always. Now we had a bounce. That's why on Monday I was saying that this is a good bouncing spot, uh, and yesterday too, right? And uh, well, now from a four-hour point of view, uh, we do still have a gap. So because we have a bullish gap, right? Because why? Because the 21 is above the 144, right? So it's a bullish gap. I mean, it's a bullish kind of structure. If price breaks above the 21, we got everything aligned. We have price above the short term, short term above the long term. We have a gap between short and long, right? So if we get a bearish gap, if we get a bearish break, doesn't mean it's a bad trade necessarily, but it shows that we could still be facing support at the long term. So the space is limited. All right. The upside space is less limited. All right. So I prefer at this point in time, from a four hour perspective, the upside break because there's less restrictions. But I would certainly be careful of this level and this level because those are resistance spots. And but if we break this trend line and break these fractals here, all right, there is that potential for a breakout. And then we might face, I think this is stronger resistance and we might face again and bounce back down. So from that point of view, on an hourly chart, I would prefer the break, pull back, and continue. Once we have price breaking above it, pulling the moving average away from each other, price goes back to the 21 EMA, I think that could be a good trade because we have a gap on the hourly. We have a first break, which means that there's probably going to be a second bounce or continue in many cases. So we got a gap on the hour and we have a gap on the four hour. And there is space to resistance. So that scenario at this moment is, seems the most interesting on the euro dollar. Um, now, from a long term perspective, I agree with Caitlin. From a long-term perspective, when looking at the daily weekly, there's actually more space to the downside. And I would also prefer your dollar to move down because that would mean that the downtrend is going to continue and we will see more trending moves to the downside. If price doesn't make that down move, then there's going to be, in my analysis, uh, probably going to be more choppier months the next six months, which obviously... Um, trending environment, uh, how I trade would be better at least. What would that require? Well, that means that we need really price to go below this 21 EMA band. We need, first of all, a break below this trend line. We need a break below this bottom. This bottom, 111.50, is last week's low, last month's low. Once we break through that, we break below the 21 EMA daily, um, and, and what we'll probably see is price make a spike below it, start to make a gap again between those moving averages, probably will price will hook back to the 21 EMA because the first time it moves away from those moving averages, remember, it's not the time it really, normally, it's not the time it really pushes far. It typically hooks back to the 21 EMA and then the second time it goes further. So something like this movement, right, or if you want to call it a one, two, three maybe, right, would be great for downside. So we need to see one, first of all, which means we need to break through the 111.50. We need to break below the 21 EMA. We need to break below that trend line. From a long-term perspective, that would be better. Or what could happen is price pushes up, hits resistance, starts to move down like that, breaks below it, hooks back below, something like that. Now it's basically there would be then an hourly breakout to the upside, hit resistance, turn around, Eventually, perhaps break through that uh, 111.50 support, um, hook back to the 21 EMA and fall again. That, if I could decide how the chart would look like, I would, let's say, <laughs> for the fun of it, this is what I would then uh, would prefer maybe, right? Because it would give a breakout to the upside, which on lower time frames looks set up okay eventually if things go well, and then the downside break. But let's see. Obviously, this is not important. I'm just giving uh, an idea of what could happen. Most important is that as traders, we follow price. In my opinion, is that we follow price and try to, let's say, remove our 
bias. Obviously, we're going to always have a bit of a bias, but I mean, try to approach the chart um, with calm and objectiveness. Try to, in a way, let the market decide where it goes and we tag along. That's what I mean. Instead of thinking for the market, in a way. All right. So I think we thoroughly looked at the zero dollar multiple time frames using these moving averages. And I don't discuss the moving averages that intensively normally. So now um, we had to focus on that. Does anyone have any questions? Let's see, BT does actually. Does yesterday's close give any clue of direction for today? Yeah, typically it does. And uh, many times yesterday's daily candle, just like last week's weekly candle, is not a bad directional signal. And it's a good clue. And uh, well, if we look at, uh, if we got and uh, look at the candles here, for instance, bullish, bullish, bullish in a row. Uh, this was bullish, but a big wick. So we got bearish, 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 bullish wick, bearish, bearish, kind of indecision candle, but does give the rebound here again, back down. So if you look engulfing twins, back up, first bearish candle, back down. It's it's definitely something to uh, to consider. And yesterday was a bullish day. Monday was a bullish day. Yesterday I had a close near the high. Um, from that point of view, I think that bullish continuation uh, is something that makes sense. Yesterday's low, about 111.90 ish. So if you look at it from a daily candle point of view, that uh, there, if it you know retraces lower, it could be a bouncing spot still. But if you look at the moving average on the hourly chart, I'm not excited about it. All right, Darshan, not yet. <laughs> Interesting question. Uh, Chelsea, let's see. Why do I use the 21 and 144? The 21, because I like how it, well, both are Fibonacci sequence levels, first of all. And I like Fibonacci levels. I like Fibonacci numbers. I like, first of all, I use Fibonacci for retracements. I use it for the movements in pips as well. And... Uh, yeah, I like them for moving averages too. Now, honestly, I don't think if it's 20 or 21 or if it's 150, 144, that it really matters that much. But uh, because I like fib sequences, I just went for those. Now, the 21 or 20, right, uh, I like because it's hugging price so closely and it gives a good idea about, you know, how momentum is, is, is behaving itself. It really stays above the 20, 21. Uh, it's it's a fast piece. Now, 144 is the long term, and I use it for the divergence target, the retracement target, the longer return to average. So when price makes that reversal retracement, uh, it typically goes there. Now these are all zones. So if you use 130 or 160, I don't think there's a big difference to be honest. It's all about basically an area of price. So I don't think the number specifically is important. It's more about the idea behind it. One is kind of, I would say the 21 is uh, in between short and medium, and uh, 144 is, uh, is long, long term. You can also do it differently. You could even put, you could even go with an 8, uh, a 34, and a 144, and you have three degrees. Or you could even go with a 13, and a 55, and um, 144, or maybe even some people even use something like uh, a 21 and a 50 and a 200 or 20, 50, 200, for instance. Uh, you can use three three layers as well, and, and the difference would be basically is that the lowest signals momentum, the second the short term trend, and the third the long term trend. And yeah, basically. Small pullbacks will go back to the momentum moving average. Bigger pullbacks will go to the short term uh, medium, and large pullbacks will go to the long term. And if it, of course, goes through the long term, then it's a trend reversal. So I think two for me is enough personally, but it. Um, I also like to use two because otherwise it just becomes a bit crowded. The whole chart starts to become a bit messy. 
But three, that would be possible too. You could even think about combinations like 13, 34, 8 and 34, and 144, for instance. All right. Uh, it uh, could it go down today? Yeah, it's yeah. Basically, at this moment, it can go anywhere really because it's it's in the triangle, and yeah, that triangle can break both ways. I think upside may be slightly uh, higher chance, perhaps, because of that daily candle, for instance. Moving average is aligned to the upside, four-hour chart, stuff like that. All right, 140, sorry, uh, pound one-hour chart. I don't have the moving averages. All right. Well, pound is the um, is not one I'm trading at the moment, and that has to do with that divergence that is present. And when there is divergence present here, um, typically I'm looking to see if price go back to that long to moving average, and it, and it didn't. And um, yeah, it's not a perfect market sometimes, or, or you know these things are not always happening. Uh, typically, it will go back to long term. And in this case, it just still uses the 21 for further downside. And but that's not something I'm really excited about trading, just because that divergence is still there, and is really not gone, according to my vision and analysis, until it hits that long term. I was actually more interested in upside uh, because of that divergence, but it didn't break above this trend line, and that would have been my signal for an upside because. This is attempt one. This could have been attempt two, but it didn't fully materialize. So eventually it moved lower. But if that would have been two, it would have been this reversal trade right in here, which still hasn't happened. And uh, it's still using 21, surprisingly, uh, as resistance and not making that bigger retracement, that's it. So for me, from an hourly point of view, this pound USD is not interesting because of that. Now, the daily was, in the meantime, in a kind of range. As you can see, when looking at the daily chart here, look at that. They're not, they're sometimes kind of apart, but the gap is so small, and other times they're just, the moving averages are touching each other here. So, you know, from that point of view, uh, this was a range. And there was this break to the upside, in fact, didn't go all too far, kind of close and reverse back down. And moving averages on the daily chart are still aligned, are still on the top of each other. So from a daily perspective, there's no gap between those moving averages yet. Therefore, I'm not that interested. If price can continue to push lower and create a gap, all right, then things get to start, start becoming interesting. If price can push through, probably get the hook back to the 21 EMA, and it will probably use as resistance for downside. That could be very interesting. The moment it's still in a range. So at the moment, because it's still in a range, I would expect price actually to go back more to the four hour long term moving average. Which means that if I look at the hourly, first of all, I would expect price eventually to break above the, the 21, use it as support to go back to the long term move, moving average, and eventually actually to go up all the way to the long term of the four hour. So something like this is what I'm expecting in the pound dollar. I'm not trading that vision or trading plan as yet because price is not giving me a reason to do so, staying above the tw below the 21. So I'm staying neutral, I'm staying out of that. Um, if it pushes far enough and continues to push lower and lower and lower, then there will be a gap here, as I said, and eventually uh, I would be interested in trading it more down. All right. Um, in the meantime, I'm expecting rather expecting to move to the 21 here on the four hour chart up to that, then I would expect resistance. And uh, let's see if we can continue that lower downs, that, that push to the downside or not. Um, I think that's it. 
in the pound perspective. Uh, I've never tried TDI, I think, maybe in the past that I've forgotten how this is possible, but um, doesn't ring a bell. Well, the name TDI rings a bell, but just can't recall it. It's a combination between RSI and MA. Okay. No. No, but I would like to try it. I mean, if you if, if you uh, can share it by any chance, not sure if you can, but, but otherwise no problem. The EMAs are in two colors indeed. Well, they're actually um, two different types of colors. So we got we got the 21 EMA is either light green or orange, and it depends on the angle. If it's bullish, it's going to be light green. If it's bearish, it's going to be orange. And we got the long term that's either dark green or purple. And if it's bearish, it's purple. It's, if it's bullish, it's, it's dark green. So it depends on the angle. And if anyone's interested in getting this indicator, I can send it to you. I like it because um, because it clearly gives the angle, makes things just visually easier to uh, to digest in a way. Ah, thank you, Caitlin. Much appreciated. So anyone there, there's the email in, uh, in the chat box. You should be able to see it. If not, let me know. Um, so I like that because it's just easier to, to incorporate that info. Now, is it, I mean, does that make sense from a pound perspective? Any questions maybe pound, on the pound USD? And look, here you can see it was a choppy upside. When it's choppy, basically the price goes back to that long term. Here, this is just a range. It's even, this is a range. This is, not even, this is still a trend to the upside. Why? Because there's a gap. Remember, there's that gap here. There's that gap here. But price is just using the long term as a bouncing spot. Here, there's no gap. That's a range. Range is still choppiness. But once you get a trend like this, you can see good gap. Price goes back to the 21, continues, it's the one long term, continues, it's the short term, continues. And then what do you get? Well, it, there's not strong divergence, there's only a single divergence here, but anyhow, you do get uh, up to 21. Ah. Up to the 21 and up to the 144. And look at that, this 3A move. And then eventually, what does it do? struggles here right at the long term but eventually actually breaks to the upside so it became a reversal same here it was trending but then moved back to the long term in three waves was struggling but then eventually moved to the downside and made a reversal downtrend right back to the 21 back to the long term struggled actually uh, made it made a downside attempt, struggled again, and then reversed, etc. All right. Oh, the euro dollar is uh, is moving down. Let's take a look. Anyhow, in general, um, yeah, it's moving deep. And uh, still has some 50 pips, though, to, to before it hits, gets close to the uh, yesterday's low. Let's see. Be interesting. Now, when I look at the, on the other screen, which you don't see, I'm looking at the entire kind of multiple pairs, and I really don't see anything that's sticking out at the moment that would be interesting, perhaps. Um, so I'll just continue with, with the majors at the moment. Um, regarding the euro dollar, I think yeah, if it gets low, maybe just a quick note, extra note on the on the on the euro dollar. I think if it gets into that 112, 112, 25 zone, uh, you know, considering I know that it's, it's, a, it's a one hour range, but it could be a good bouncing spot. It's a low risk bouncing spot. I mean, it, it could break through 112. I obviously can do anything it wants to, but 
it is, uh, I think, a, it's a low risk, smaller, relatively smaller stop loss. There's a decent bouncing potential there. So the reward potential is, is okay. What's the chance of a success on that? I don't know. I mean, I mean if you're looking at a uh, target up, up at uh, perhaps uh, even 113, 114 here, you know, it's a, it's a good bounce potential. So it really doesn't have to have a high win percentage there. It's, even, as, even if it only is a winning trade in three out of 10 times, it should be okay if the R2R is, is that high. So if, if you get, I mean, if price gets into that, that 112 area there, 112.25, then, uh, then that could be a, an interesting potential for a bounce. Let's see. Also, you know, don't forget this, on hourly, we're in a range. So if price goes away from the average, there's a higher chance that price will actually go back to the average. Uh, the averages are actually more of a kind of like a gravity pull if they're intertwined like this. But there's a, there's a decent potential for that. Eventually, there will be a breakout, of course. But typically, the breakout doesn't happen the very first time on average. So let's see. Just my two cents about, you know, where there could be a good bounce spot. So dollar yen. Um, all right. Interesting. Why? Well, we got some gap again between the short and long term here. So if price, and this was basically we had a range here, didn't we? Price went in three waves up. One, two, three. Went up to the 21 and went up to the 44. Accelerated below the 21 in this downtrend right here. This was a decision level. It decided to go down and pull the 21 away from the 144. This is one. This could be two. What could be next? It could be a third. It doesn't have to be. But if it does break below this fractal, I would say, below the 21 EMA, there is that chance for that three. Now, the opposite is possible, too. I know that maybe sounds funny, but... This could be a one, this could be a two, and well, the three could be up. Why is that possible? Well, because uh, we went back to the 21 here with momentum, and we're making a triangle. So from that, I mean, from a 15-minute point of view, actually, this is more looking like a bull flag or a triangle. So in that regard, the break could really go like this or that. 50-minute chart is definitely more bearishly aligned than one hour two because of the gap here. So are we going to close that gap or are we going to break away again and pull for the third time? I think that uh, that those two levels are probably important for making for yeah price to make that decision. Uh, let's see, from a wave perspective, this bottom is important because if it goes through this bottom, it's not a one, two, three, four, five anymore. Um, I think that uh, if it starts to push up, uh, let's see, we got uh, not much space to the upside because 120.80 and 121.20 are the targets, very limited which means that if it does break above this, this one hour resistance level, there's only about 50 pips, which is not enough, a lot of space on the hourly chart, but that space could be used, could be traded easier on a lower time frame. So sometimes there's space available. Let's say there's 100 pips available on the daily chart. That's not much on the daily chart, but if traded on an hourly chart, it could still be a nice trade. Now, in the hourly chart, there's 50 pips available, which is okay-ish, but perhaps the breakout could be better traded on a 15 or 30-minute chart, maybe, once it starts to push up. If it does push above this, this one-hour resistance at 120.30. At the downside, I would put a fib on the 
third leg here like this. And the minus 272 target at 11860 is the target, I think. Very modest target to the upside, to the downside, excuse me, because ultimately I would uh, still be cautious of this fib, which is last week's bounce. Big wick at the bottom of last week's candle. Uh, no, I would target actually the 50 fib, 118.87. Or 119 is the 50 fib according to the weekly candle. 119, uh, let me take a look. 119 will be the target, my target to the downside because of that 50 fib. It's about halfway that big bullish candle on the weekly. Obviously, eventually did make that fall. I was a bit conflicted because of the fact that I had a euro dollar bullish view, but just proves that sometimes these things. Uh, yeah, do continue even uh, if maybe the let's say the correlation doesn't uh, match and uh, we got this fall I guess it's this fall I think so so it was a pretty uh, pretty big fall for Nazi All right so what happened here well got a range up in here Right, and we had a first gap here. Then we pulled away again, so we got a one, two, three, and then we had hook backs to the 21, used as resistance. Eventually, we got that divergence between. Uh, well, we didn't have divergence actually, but we got convergence. But anyhow, we had to move back to the long term, bounce again, and then use the short term again, and we're retaining this gap basically here. So we've still got that trend to the downside. Now, now we have actually a break of this bottom, and we're turning on the oscillator. So do we have divergence? And yes, we do. We got a lower low, but the oscillator is, a, is, is not. And the oscillator is turning. So we've got divergence, which means that at this moment, I would expect price to go back to the long-term moving average. Now, not necessarily that every time I have divergence, single divergence on the hourly chart, I'm right away trading a reversal. Definitely not. In some cases, yes. I typically want more evidence than that on the hourly chart. For our chart, a single divergence is stronger. On the hourly chart, double divergence is better. Perhaps some supportive, you know, supportive arguments like, for instance, a big level, uh, a big daily level, or some confluence that could could show, okay, we're gonna we're gonna break or bounce back. Uh, against their trend. Um, at this moment, we already reversed back to the 21. If it does break above the H3 and pivot, maybe for instance, that could be the indication of a reversal. I don't know. So I want to trade that. But from a technical point of view, I'm not trading it to the downside at least until it probably gets about here. Then it could still be a good bouncing spot back down. In that case, let me put a line where the, where the long-term moving average is on the hourly. And we can check out how that looks like on the four hour. Okay, so the, the long-term one hour is those green lines. So as it uh, retraces higher, it's gonna retest the 21 on the four hour, it's gonna retest these resistance levels and probably be a good resistance zone for maybe even a continuation. And why is that? Because on a four hour chart, there is no divergence yet. This is still pushing lower. So if there's a if there is a retracement, we could see that follow through even from there. Good gap. Good trend, 
So if you test resistance, there's a good chance of follow through and continuation. Even if it's a 50-50 chance that price turns around here, if it gets there. The R2R is the risk is, is tight and the potential reward is probably, you know, we'll probably see a, another bottom break to be honest here. And uh, let me put a fib from here to here. Target could be 69.50. So there's plenty of reward potential there compared to the risk. RUSD is, is nicely trending to the downside. All right, you're odd. Uh, talked about it yesterday. I said, look at this candle. And let it close bullish. And I would be looking for a retracement to the 38 or 50 fib. Went to the 50 fib, bounced exactly at the 50 fib. And uh, made a nice dash to the minus 618 target. Kind of even actually made the spike up to the minus 1,000 target for anywhere between 200 and 270 pips. Anyone join me on that trade by any chance on the Eurod? It was one of the ones I liked a lot um, because if, if it had a good bullish candle, I think this candle was bullish enough, in my opinion. So it was a good continuation. Oh, sorry, it's the wrong template there. Let's see, there it is. All right. So for our chart, you can see um, price nicely trending, and um, the 21 giving bounces, the 144 giving bounces, and the story continuing, continuing, as you can see. And uh, yeah, now the question is. Uh, there's no divergence, but this is such a massive spike. There is that chance it can go back and make a one, two, three. And that would mean it would require a break below the 21 to go back to that 144. Or will the 21 provide a bounce? And will price then rally from that 21 to continue and use it as support? Now, as you can see, a lot of times it does go back to the 144 uh, when prices, especially perhaps on, on you know, not as, this is an uptrend, but it's not as maybe as powerful of a trend. It still goes back to the 144. So there is a good chance it can do that. It all depends. Let's see how price reacts in this decision zone right in here. This zone, this 21 EMA. What will probably happen is that price will bounce here and then it depends will there be failure like this or a breakout like that and we'll probably be able to draw a trend line like this so what will probably happen is price will bounce this was to move down back to the 21 21 was still aided in the bounce we'll hit this resistance line and then that's the ultimate decision time, in my opinion. That will be support like that. We'll get into a triangle and we'll get follow through to the upside or the reversal retracement back to the long term, which, as we know, is roughly an indication of a bounce again. So it's, now it's, about, now it's a, I think, a, a moment to wait with the year odd. But yesterday, yesterday, there was a good trade because it was uh, had this momentum to the upside and it was rebounding from the 21 and breaking above it. And there was that space for upside. Didn't go all too far. Well, I mean, it went far enough, I guess, in terms of pips. But relatively, it had space up to here and it didn't get all the way up to that resistance spot. So um, that's my view on the Euro odd. 
we can take a look at different time frames and try to get more information uh, about what's going on using those moving averages. And you can see that uh, it, it was choppy in the weekly here, but uh, we are getting a gap on, on the weekly here. Getting a gap. That's the first gap. So maybe we're going to move back, continue, and who knows? Maybe we'll get a one, two, three. We don't know. Let's see. Nothing's for sure, but um, we are getting a good trend at the moment on, on the day. The question is, will there be that follow through right now? That's one, two, three, four, five, sixth candle. Today will be an important day from time factor point of view. Uh, we could get a bigger retracement before maybe it bounce up again. And uh, yeah, uh, otherwise I have nothing to add. Let's see how price respects here and eventually probably how it handles this, this triangle. All right, let's take a look at the dollar cap. Uh, let's see, dollar cat, good trend on the daily, no doubt about it. It's using actually 21 on the daily, isn't it, to push higher. But we see some kind of weakening on, on the four hour. something like a channel like this at the moment is going on. Good, good bottom. Uh, maybe not that much of weakening, actually. It still stays pretty, pretty solidly in this channel. Four-hour chart, looking back all the time, to the, roughly to the 144. Very choppy in the hourly, as you can see. Four-hour chart looks like a bit better because there's still that gap between these, so they're still in the trending mode to the upside. So probably need a break. And uh, from my hourly perspective, I would probably, I mean, four-hour looks set up, but what I, the one-hour not yet. You can see it's intertwined. So probably what I would prefer is a break. Pull back to the 21. When there's a gap between the 21 and 144, look for a bounce here and try to trade basically the four hour breakout by waiting for a break, pull back a continuation on the hourly. If I would be trading the CAD, that's probably what I would wait for. I'm not sure if this is the most interesting pair relatively compared to uh, all of these uh, currencies at the moment. In fact, from this point of view, I was even thinking about a bounce trade here to the downside because I was seeing it as a rejection potential there. But ultimately didn't trade it because, uh, well, I'm not a big fan of just the dollar CAD in, in the Asian session. And there was not a lot of space before hitting those moving averages again. So there's not a lot of profit potential. So skip that. All right, let's see. Anyone have a particular currency pair in mind? Uh, Darshan, by the way, giving a warning heads up here. CAD News, 1.30 p.m., probably London time, always makes large moves. So something to keep an eye on. That's a good tip, 1.30. That probably is like 8.30 Eastern time. Yeah, definitely. Pound New Zealand, Euro Yen. That will be the next ones. When, let's see, question. When gets fall down whether to the beginning of the channel? Well, price can fall down to um, the channel. Let's take a look. Well, when you, a channel like this, you can kind of cut in four zones. <clears throat> you 
you have the middle line which cuts it in two zones and then you can put a line in between the middle and the top and the middle and the bottom to make even quarter lines and a channel like that when you have quarter lines like that kind of symbolizes already in a way uh, the moving average principle When price is in the top quarter, you're not really looking for it to buy because there's that chance that it's just uh, at resistance. But if it's in the bottom half, it's interesting, right? Because there's a potential for a bounce and trend continuation. So when does it move to the bottom? Well, typically when you have divergence, uh, you're going to see price move back to that bottom half on average or when price hits the resistance level typically you'll see some retracement so when it gets to one extreme often enough it retraces back to retest the bottom or if there's divergence i'm not sure if that answers the question but yeah friday we have nfp indeed always have to be careful with that Alrighty, uh, Pound New Zealand, big gap. There is divergence between these these, these tops. The four-hour chart is ranging, not yet, but close to ranging. Still, still pushing forward. Still, there's that gap. Still, price is bouncing off to 144. Um, it actually made a spike and moved all the way back to 144. Bounced off to 144. Made a spike, move back to 144. Um, technically, I mean, according to my rule, not a range, but I can visually see obviously that the angle to the upside is very weak, relatively. As it's kind of like grinding along the 21 EMA here. All right. One, one hour is aligned to the upside. If it breaks above this trend line, there could be this one, two, three, or even a bigger one, two, three. It could be the three of the three. There is a gap between the long and the short term. Four hour is still an uptrend. Daily is an uptrend. Could see that follow through. Might want to aim for conservative target. I can minus 618 because uh, when looking at this four hour chart, it doesn't really accelerate far before you kind of see a pullback. So that's something to be aware of. But maybe we can use the, um, let's see, we can use the Fib sequence level. Now, on a pound New Zealand, you know, you, which typically sees bigger movements, you're going to see price indeed push through the third level a bit easier. Uh, it actually already just went to the sixth level as if it's nothing. <laughs> so it's quite uh, quite a different kind of behavior with the pound New Zealand than maybe um, on the euro dollar, for instance, um, where a move like 600 pips is, well, takes a bit more time <laughs> than uh, typically a few hours. I like this pound New Zealand, but uh, yeah, so if it breaks above the sixth level, as you can see, there's that space to the seventh at about 247. Euro yen, let's take a look. And then DAX. Your yen daily is in a range, moving averages on top of each other. Four hour chart is uh, in a downtrend at the moment. One hour chart has divergence. Two 
doesn't look that appealing from a moving average point of view. Now, there's only a single divergence. It could get a double divergence before it makes that correction up to that long term. And uh, there seems to be a breakout trade now. I mean, on a lower time frame, we can see that uh, this could be a one, two, and perhaps we're going down for a three. But considering the divergence on the hourly, it probably will not really break far. It just might stop. It's not something that I'm very interested in trading. It might just stop at this trend line. Break the bottom by a bit, bounce roughly at here, and maybe make a one, two, three reversal, retracement back up. I don't. So it doesn't appeal to me. I don't know if there's anything specific um, that you would like to discuss on this pair. Let's see. Iron, Iron is asking 134.50. Yeah, my trend line is about 134.50. But personally, uh, I don't know enough. I would have to check the euro again. I mean, I don't know. I would like to see more than that trend line. Some other reasons why that could be a bouncing spot. There is a bottom here, perhaps. There is double divergence, but so yeah, maybe there is enough reason for that. Um, ultimately, a trend line like this is is interesting, but especially if you use it against the trend, it, it can be uh, risky dangerous there it's let me or let me formulate it this way it's not a, a trade that I would be jumping for joy to try I probably I mean a lot of times I skip these trades because I'm looking for um, for more conf more spots that are a bit more confirmed and typically look for trades that are more trending or have that space a bit more but it could be a bouncing spot. Let's see. Um, DAX. Kind of just missed the 50 fib here. And the target. Uh, well, we have a good gap. Obviously. And if you look at the daily, what do we see on the daily? Well, we see, let's see, we see gap one, gap two, one, two, three. We see move back below the 21 and then back to the 144. We see a struggle at the 144 and then a break below it. All the classical things we've been talking about, right? Um, and what could happen now? Well, this is the first push. Uh, it uh, could be an interesting one, two, three as well. But it would have to bounce off the 21 and show signs of continuing. Obviously, that, does, that doesn't always happen. Just because it breaks loaded like this doesn't mean it always does like that. Uh, what basically will be the deciding factor look at here, for instance. What will be the deciding factor is how it responds to the 21 EMA band. If it breaks, if it uses the 21 EMA band, you'll probably get the breakout. If it breaks above it, and eventually we get this consolidation and starts to revert back up. That will be the key here too. That will be, in my opinion, the way to monitor if this is a retracement or is this part of a further downside? Now, there is reason to be cautious on a weekly because what we just hit, the long-term moving average. And I know looking at multiple time frames from that point of view can sometimes become confusing, but we are at a monthly and weekly bouncing spot. And therefore, uh, this could become resistance, but it's, you know, it's just as likely that we might see big, a bigger bounce because we are at that support. Maybe back, maybe back up to this resistance. Maybe it can go back to this long-term average. 
just because we are at long-term support. So from that point of view, if price breaks below, breaks above this four hour, there is that chance, I would say, for a rally. If it breaks below the support, perhaps, we could see maybe the breakout continuation on the, uh, the arrow. Oh. Uh, four hour. You can see on the hourly order, we went back to the long term. So if it does break to the upside, it will probably do this, hook back, and bounce again, and make a one, two, three, like that, which basically would bring price like this up to the long term moving average here. Whereas if it then breaks below support, this is already kind of a one, two, three, so it could break like that. Maybe challenge this bottom. Maybe break the bottom by a bit. Probably not a lot. Why will it not break the bottom by a lot? Don't forget, we're still at a big, big um, monthly and weekly support. So, in fact, looking at last week's bullish candle, uh, I wouldn't even expect a bottom break. And even if, even though a breakout could look interesting on the hourly. On a four-hour point of view, we see that this is a bouncing spot, so any break here is probably limited, and we have to be careful that, in fact, anywhere in that zone, it could be a bounce spot. So it could be a break and <laughs> bounce right away. Uh, so a bit tricky environment here. Not an easy environment. Um, you know, 78.6, even a 61.8, 78.6, 880.6, 80, all of those levels there could, could provide a bounce. So the spaces to the downside are quite narrow. Obviously, if it breaks the bottom, well, that changes things, at least a bit. But not a lot either, because don't forget that we're still in the zone. This is a rough zone and not a precise level. So even if it breaks the bottom, in fact, we're still in that bounce spot zone. But yeah. Bit tricky at the moment with the stacks. Um, yeah, one, two, three, just a different naming indeed. I call it the one, two, three. Uh, doesn't really have anything to do with waves. It's just an easy reference kind of to, to label the movements. Uh, and no, it has nothing really to do with um, the added waves. Just an easy way for me to show you where those one, two, threes are happening. And you could use the A, B, C, D as well indeed for that. All right. Well, market is not really heating up at the moment. Your dollar is getting closer, perhaps. No, it's still about 112.50. Uh, yeah, nothing really exciting happening at the moment, as far as I can see. I mean, there could be uh, maybe some crosses I don't know about, but let's take a look at this odd yen. Did make a break to the downside. EuroCAD uh, was looking for a break of like this level, but then found the Euro to be more interesting. That could be still a breakout level though to think about. Maybe it's using the 21 here, could use the 21 as a bounce, or at least potential breakout could be interesting. You can see that they're aligned. So there is that uh, breakout space, let's say, to the upside on the EuroCAD, but that's um, more or less the Euro uh, many of those, I would say. Probably. Well, yeah, you're odd too. The two is upside aligned. So let's see if it bounces off that 21 EMA. Yeah, the, last week's market movements 
uh, this big spike up here on uh, what was it 24th no, was that last week yeah that was last week um, beginning of last week uh, making it the playing field a bit uh, sometimes awkward indeed All right, if you have any particular pair in mind, let me know. We can take definitely take a look at that. Otherwise, in the meantime, I don't uh, I don't see anything spectacular developing. I will keep an eye on uh, the euro odd, euro CAD, your dollar, dollar yen, on New Zealand. Uh, odd USD, uh, but nothing right now, I think. Um, so let's see. Tonight, then it's going to take a look at price action trading in school, taking a look at candlesticks and trend. Tomorrow, we're going to take a look at bounce and breakouts uh, tonight together at uh, 5 p.m. UK time. So hope to see you then. Pound odd, one more favorite here. Pound odd is kind of looking a mixture of pound New Zealand and your odd with there is a gap between uh, the moving averages and prices above it too showing the potential of both a retracement back or a, a balance so probably the same as the pound unit but it just doesn't have a nice trend line I don't like the trend line that much. Maybe it's not as neat. This trend line probably could break out. Otherwise, it could bounce again off the long term moving average as well. Or let me say it this way it could bounce off the short term. The downside break doesn't look like it has a lot of space. Bullish bounce looks a bit more spacious there. Or bullish break than the bearish break or maybe the bullish bounce here but those are the zones i think personally those are the decision levels we've got one here that's a decision level we've got one, two here and we've got three here and if it bounces or breaks you now there could be potential trades up or down at, at all these levels in a way simply put and i think but still i think the upside has more it's a bit more interesting. Uh, let me take a look at the long term, actually. Big trends on the daily and weekly to the upside, as you can see. So it would really need to break below this uh, 21 EMA band on the daily, at least. Otherwise, it's uh, it's uh, in a bullish environment. Let's see, pound yen. Hmm, kind of a tricky zone on the uh, daily. It's out. It's a bit below the uh, long term, and <clears throat> just get below uh, the twenty-one weekly. Hey, hey, hey. Let's see. Could become very bearish, but I don't think it's there quite yet. moment there's divergence on the hourly uh, which could become a four-hour divergence not yet though daily chart kind of pushed through the long term still ultimately I think needs to hook back to the 21 EMA I think that there could be 
a bearish potential, but it still has to hook back to the, still has to bounce back to the 21 EMA and then use that as resistance. The next time it put, uses that as resistance, it could be a pretty a decent move down. Uh, because if it does that, if it hooks back and uses it as resistance, we got this space all the way down to the long term, which is an interesting zone here. It's just that uh, I don't think it's now is the moment for that big move. I think that it could still inch lower. Ultimately, I think it's going to make a bigger rally, then probably hit the resistance. And if it turns around, that could be an interesting bouncing spot. So at the moment, it doesn't seem like there are very profitable zones either way at the moment. If it does maybe break lower, the chances of a bounce increase. Now, I, I'm not a big fan of trading it either way. Um, best thing is if it goes higher as a resistance bounce. <laughs> what you heard there is actually a cat. <laughs> Funny. But I can imagine the similarity in the uh, in, in crying there. <laughs> so I would be still uh, on the sidelines with the Kanye personally. <laughs> yes, exactly, Darshan. Actually, three. Got two cats. busy. <laughs> they help me with uh, analyzing. So yeah, we could see a smaller break, but uh, yeah, I don't know how much. Kind of the same with the others, the Urian. So, well, I guess that's all I have to say about it. So thank you as always for being here. Don't forget uh, to take a look at the website, Admiral Markets. We've got a lot of the content on the website daily, same thing with the social media. You can stay up to date, maybe a bit easier like that. And um, wish you a good day, wish you good trading. Hope to see you in the webinars later today and tomorrow. Cheers.